Look at that den, it looks cool. I think I'll fit. While I'm walking over roots and things, does anyone else like thank or apologise to trees and their roots when you're walking over them? Or is that just a weird kiki thing? While I was back down Glasgow Way for my first jab, I went for what was supposed to be a short walk at Shuttlehorrow Country Park, but it turned into a most of the day walk, as these things sometimes do. I'm out for a walk today and I am pinecone foraging, so I can use little pine cones if they're quite dry. I, I totally just sneezed and it echoed around the woods. <laughs> so if I find dried out pine cones, I can use them for my little stove. To burn it's obviously free fuel so i quite like that so i'm out in a bit of um pine forest what i've realized is that i really need a little bag like a little pouch to collect all these things in so what i've done instead is turned inside out my little pouch that i keep my microphone that attaches to my phone in turned that inside out and it is now full of little pine cones so i will show you how i decide what pine cones to take so generally pine cones like this burn really well I usually keep them in the van for a few days or a couple of weeks or something and they just dry out a little bit more and then they burn better. I also try and make sure I've got ones that have at least partly opened up. If they're completely closed then obviously all the seeds are still inside and although this is managed woodland I still like to give every little tree an opportunity and think that it might grow. So if most of the, if it's mostly open I'll take it and if it's completely closed I would just leave it behind. This one's kind of half and half, so I think it's going in the bag. And then I am the girl that is walking around the woods with a rack sack on and looking for more pine cones and a little carabiner bag of pine cones attached. It's a good look. I like it. So this is great. It's a really big one, so it would burn for quite a while and it's very open. They also just look great. There are lots of twigs and stuff here as well, but I've got quite a collection of twigs at the moment. What I really need is some pine cones. They just, they burn a little differently to twigs and using a combination of the two I find is the best way to keep my little stove going when I want to cook something that takes quite a while. So I love it when they're really open like this and these are actually a really good size. I can do a few bigger ones, but generally the ones this size work really well. They're really easy to chuck into the little gap of my burner when I've actually got a pot on the top without having to lift the pot up. And there are so many, I don't think the forest is going to mind me nabbing a few. My bag is full, I think that's enough pine cones for now, so back to my hike. I'm in the den. When I first stepped in, I may have um, stood up into some spider's webs, which is quite funny, but there's some really cool webs in here that I'm going to show you. This thing must be caught on a spider's web or something. It's like doing a little dance in midair. <laughs> it looks quite funny. It's a wildlife dance. Sometimes you realise you haven't really walked that far yet, seeing as you started near the visitor centre. But I'm hungry already because I've spent so much time stopping to film cool things and exploring. <laughs> I was going to try and get to the green bridge for lunch, 
like before I stopped for lunch. But I might stop like right now. <laughs> I need a slack. <laughs> oh look, there's a bit of a tree to sit on. Oh, it's a bit wet there. It's a tree trunk. Ooh, it's got a lot of holes in it. Oh, that's cool. Feels pretty sturdy. Lunch spot. One of the things I love the most about my way of life is the random meetings I have with people. About midway round this walk, I was happily picking some wild garlic and got chatting to a man who had worked at Chateau for 20 years as head gardener. We sat, distanced of course, on a log in the sunshine by the river, and he told me stories of the things he and his colleagues had seen in both the house and the woods in the area. I don't know whether tales like this just sound better in a Scottish accent, but he certainly had me wondering about some of the things he'd seen and felt in the forest. There's believed to be a ghost in the area who is known as the Black Lady of Broomhill. She is thought to be an Indian woman called Sita Ferdin who came to Broomhill in 1902 under the guise of being a servant, but was thought to be the Laird's mistress. The Laird, Captain Henry McNeil Hamilton, and her had met in South Africa during the Second Boer War and were said to be lovers. One night she was seen late in the evening, but missing the following day. People were told she had left of her own volition, but she had been seen after the last train had left the local station the night before, and there was no sign that the horses and carriage had been out. Local rumour claimed the captain had murdered her, but this has never been proven. There's been various sightings of a ghost thought to be Sita over the years, and all sorts of strange occurrences in the area. I kind of love hearing about things that can't be explained, because often as humans we seem to think we have an explanation for everything, and that our current level of understanding is the final level. Only to be proved wrong when the Earth turns out not to be flat, or we figure out how to split atoms. I think there's a lot that we still don't know or understand, and I like the mystery of that. If you are interested in finding out more about this story, the granddaughter of the housekeeper who saw Sita after the time she had supposedly got a train has done a lot of research and written a book about it. The book is called The Black Lady of Broomhill, if you want to check it out. This tree has a little home in it. I wonder what lives in here. Whoa, that's crazy. Okay, I can't fit in. My phone is going in. Whoa. I feel like I should have brought a torch with me. That tree, it's amazing. I love big trees and little trees, and all trees, really. <laughs> 